Oh, that's that's going to add so much gravitas to this. Uh... <laughs> you got sound effects, is it? Yeah. Okay. We had decided last week. <coughs> excuse me. That um, uh, Brandon's. Um, God damn it! It turned off all of our. Let's try this again. Okay. Pretty wacky. You must look for the eyes. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now we decided last week that um, the uh, the the person the NPC would be trying to contact uh, Brandon's uh, professor. I'm just not going to look at your screen because. Uh... Okay, uh, Brandon, uh, you uh, your character has previously worked with a author that goes by the name of Jackson Elias. All right. Um, he um, he travels a lot and writes um, sort of sensationalized uh, history uh, books. He's uh, 38, um, and you guys have known each other for a while. Actually, he's he's uh, had you do some like research for some of his, or he's he's verified some of his research um, with you in the past. Um, he he typically writes about death cults. His best known book is Sons of Death: Exposing Modern Day Thuggies in India. Uh, he speaks several languages fluently and is constantly traveling. He is social and enjoys an occasional drink. He smokes a pipe. He is tough, stable, punctual, unafraid of brawls or officials. He is mostly self-educated. And his well-researched works always seem to reflect first-hand experience. He is, he is secretive and never discusses a project until he has a final draft in hand. All of his books illustrate how cults manipulate the fears of their followers. A skeptic, Elias has never found proof of supernatural powers, magic, or dark gods. Insanity and feelings of inadequacy characterize death cults, feelings for which they compensate by slaughtering individuals to make themselves feel powerful or chosen. Cults draw the weak-minded, though cult leaders are often uh, clever and manipulative. Um... But this, of course, being Call of Cthulhu means it's only a matter of time before he meets a um, a cult that actually does have proof of supernatural powers, magic, or dark gods. Um, his first book in 1910 was called Skulls Along the River, <laughs> and it was a uh, expose of a headhunter cult in the Amazon basin. Um, his next book, Masters of the Black Arts, in 1912 was a survey of supposed uh, supposed uh, sorcerous cults throughout history. Uh, 1913, his book, The Way of Terror, was a uh, analysis of the systemization of fear through cult organizations. In 1915, he wrote The Smoking Heart, the first half of which discusses uh, historical Mayan death cults, and the second um, talks about present day. Central American death cults. Um, Sons of Death in 1918 was about the thuggies. Uh, Elias um, infiltrated a cult and wrote the book. 1920, um, he wrote uh, Witch Cults of England, which uh, summarizes covens in nine English counties, interviewed uh, practicing uh, English witches. And then in his, his most recent book in 1921, The Black Power, expands um, the way of terror and interviews several anonymous cult leaders. All of these books were published by Prospero Press of New York City, and all were edited by owner-editor Jonathan Kensington. Kensington is a good friend of Jackson Elias and knows uh, your character as well. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. And what year now? now? We're uh, this is uh, January of 1925. We're starting at the beginning of the year 1925. Okay. 
now, just the other day, you received a telegraph from uh, Jackson. And the telegraph read, um, have information concerning Carlisle Expedition? Stop. Need reliable... Did someone else just join? I thought I heard the... Up oh, there it is. That looks like someone's coming in. It must be Tony. Hey, Tony. Can, Tony. You, can you hear us, Tony? Tony will be miming the Call of Cthulhu tonight. Can you hear us, Tony? Hello. Okay. Oh, no, wait, no. That was me. Yeah. No, we can't hear you, Tony. No, you can keep talking all you want. We still can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why showing up on time is a good idea. You must be... Oh, hold on. He just put something in the chat. Where the hell is the chat window now? Okay. You know, all this stuff moving around is just confusing the hell out of me. What's moving around? Well, no, I mean, everything is in a different place in the Hangout screen, so... I just, just find it's kind of slow. Like, it's, like, uh, blurry and uh, people freeze up a lot. That... Uh, Why do I always look that way? Yeah. Yeah, brain is blurry in real life, so... Some of that depends, I think, on the on the bandwidth of the person. So, well, we've got this thing going on, which know. is why which is why we were having problems last week with Paul. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, we still can't hear you, Tony. Okay, he's he's gone. Okay, I'm not I'm not doing anything in my background. That he's okay. Doing, so. Oh, there's a chat. It has a number on it. Yep. Tony Love left group chat. Oh, there he goes. Well, that solves that problem. Okay. Are you able to copy out of the PDF files that information? Um, it really it depends because some of it is tech. Well, the problem is right now I'm reading it off my tablet. Oh, okay. Sorry. I so it was I mean, yeah. well, I do. I have it in the background, but it's it, it's it's actually easier for me to read it off of my tablet. Yeah, but it'd be better for us if we had a copy of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that. Believe me. <laughs> so I think you copy the text into the chat. We could just we could just grab it from there. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me check that. Not. Because there was right a lot now. of information there, and I got very little of it. <laughs> Not right now, but the next. Yeah. Time. yeah we play it between now and then. Yeah. You know, if you need help, because I can. I can do certain things. Yeah. Okay. Well, while we wait for Tony, I'll go back to the the telegraph um, that uh, Arthur, yes, that Arthur received. Anyway, have information concerning Carlisle expedition. Stop. Need reliable investigative team. Stop. Arrive January fifteenth. Stop. Signed Jackson Elias. And it's currently about the thirteenth. So. Hey, he's, he said he was going to arrive when? Arrive January 15th. And now it's the 13th? Yes. Hello, Tony? Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can yes. hear you now. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, can you hear us? Okay. Yes, I can. Okay. Sound like you're on a phone. Like an old-fashioned phone. No, it's probably just an old headset. Um, it's neat. What, why don't you... Um, do a quick... You you have your character, right, Tony? Yes, I do. You want to give a quick uh, briefing on, on your who your character is and, you know, the, the, the public stuff? Okay. Uh, I'm playing uh, Samuel Cotter, uh, born in New Haven, Connecticut, a uh, writer. He's written some small press things. Uh, 23, male. Uh... Black eyes, or black. Uh, he's black with uh, hazel eyes, and, uh, and it says blonde hair, but I imagine brown hair. 
Maybe maybe it's um it's in the twenties. I would imagine brown hair. Yeah, processed her. <laughs> um. Okay. How do you spell Cotter? Don't C O T T E R. Oh, see, I, I just I just spelled it like uh, the TV show. So did I. <laughs> Well, that's fine. That's what it is now, then. <laughs> no, well, I've already crossed it out and made it. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Well, C O T T E. Okay, so we got a reporter, a pilot, and a writer. Correct. And Jackson is a writer. And he. Have I ever arranged investigation groups for him before? Um, probably not. What kind of group did he say he wanted again? Reliable, which. <laughs> no, <laughs> after that. <laughs> he wants a reliable investigative group. Yeah, yeah. The the it reads um, have information concerning Carlisle expedition. Stop. Need reliable investigative team. Stop. Oh. Okay, Arrive. investigative team. That's that's yeah. that's. I was wondering whether he actually used that word. Okay. Yes, team. Oh, that's uh. Interesting. So, so have I done this for him before? No. I guess because I live in New York. And, and well, I mean, it could just be because uh, I mean, you you guys you guys do know each other, and and you you have helped him out on on books and in doing research before. So, it could be that he's just pressed for time, so he wanted you to do sort of an advanced thing. Well, I imagine it's a it's a left Plus it hand fits. washes the right hand thing because as a as an academic. I have to publish papers periodically, so if he can supply me with sources or some historical, you know, oddity that I can write a paper about, that helps me keep my position at the university. True, because academia is like that. So it's probably a mutually beneficial arrangement. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't like have to travel much, and it's kind of like vicarious. And and uh, like we determined last week, um, you and um, Frederick know each other because you have because uh, he has um, tried to use you as a source for some of his more sensationalistic uh, stories. Um, we still have to determine how um, the other t how um, how Gordon and Samuel are going to fit into the equation. Oh, that's easy. Okay, let's I'll hear this. <laughs> I'll take out an ad. <laughs> Wanted reliable investigative team should not be afraid of elder gods. <laughs> oh, that counts me out. Well, the very Mama didn't word, raise no fool. The, the, well, did, were you going to go on with more, or do you want me just to start spouting stuff? Because I can. No, you go ahead and start spouting stuff. Um, awesome. Because I'm, I'm assuming once you figure out how the party is going to come together, you're going to want to know about the other part of his telegram. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there more to it? Well, no, no. I mean, it, that's... It, well, yes, there, remember he mentioned about the, the Carlisle expedition. You've already read that part. I mean, is there a part yes. you haven't read yet? No, there is nothing that has not been read. Great. The, enti the entire thing is done. But so, once once you get that, I will then brief you on the Carlisle. Number one, I have a teacher's assistant go and look up the Carlisle expedition at the library. <laughs> look through the the the... the there's a word for it, and I've forgotten what it was. They taught it to us in school. The library? No, I know what that is. I just <laughs> used that one. No, but there's like a history of newspapers and newspaper clippings. Uh, there's There are more. people who their job is to get newspaper clippings and sort them and index them so people can look them up later. The press bureau. The periodical index? No, there no, press. Go. There you go. I have a teacher's assistant go look up Carlisle Expedition because I don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> And then, uh, let's see, investigative team, well, when one says the word investigative, the very next word that typically pops out of one's mouth is reporter. So, is, Luckily, uh, you happen to know one. Is, is Frederick local to, to New York? Yes. You're a reporter for the, what was the name of the paper we determined? Uh, the, the Evening World. Well, I will call the Evening World and leave a message for Frederick to give me a call back. Because that's okay. how we do things. Yeah. There's no answering machines. Yeah. There's, you know, 
Young women at the switchboard. <laughs> yeah, pushing, yeah. pushing, pushing little, uh, little cords and sticking them in holes. There you go. So I'll leave a message for Frederick to call me back. Let's see. Investigative. Um, probably somebody he needs to travel. He's. What did the TA, TA find out about the Carlisle expedition? Okay. The Carlisle Expedition, um, unfortunately, uh, met a bad end. Um, it looks like some of the clippings that your your TA found, um, they left New York in uh, April of 1919. It was made up of um, wealthy playboy Roger Carlisle, hence the name the Carlisle Expedition. Oh, that Carlisle. Hmm. Um, the um, the other expedition members were renowned Egyptologist Sir Aubrey Penhew. Uh, he is the he was the assistant leader of the team and in charge of excavations. Um, Dr. Robert Houston, a fashionable Freudian psychologist accompanied the expedition to pursue parallel researches in, into ancient pictographs. Uh, Miss uh, Hepatia, Hepatia? No, there's not enough H's in that for Hepatia, for Hepatia. but anyway, Hepatia Masters um, is, w went along as a photographer and archivist, and she had been romantically linked to Carlisle in the past. And then um, the final um, uh, member of the expedition was a Mr. Jack Brady, a friend of uh, Carlisle, and was um, accompanying the group as General Factotum, which means he was the non-scientist guy on the expedition. Jack, go investigate that noise. Now, yeah. Um, unfortunately, in um, May of 1920, um, it was confirmed that um, the expedition was... Um, authorities blame hostile Nandi tribesmen for the shocking murders. The remains of at least two dozen expedition members and bearers are thought found in several concealed grave sites. Um, Erica Carlisle, Roger's sister and apparent heiress to the uh, Carlisle family fortune, led the, the search for her brother and the party. She credited Kikuyu tribesmen for the discovery. Though police actually found the site, yeah, the 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 big police force of Nairobi. Um, but um, while they did not um, positive, you know, actually identify the bodies, they everyone involved was declared dead. Wow. Um, and eventually in. Um, June of 1920, in June of 1920, five Nandi tribesmen uh, were convicted as ringleaders of the massacre. So, that that is what uh, your TA was able to dig up on the on the Carlisle expedition. But thinking logically. Uh, Nairobi's in Africa, right? Yes. So I'm thinking... No, it's Nairobi up in Queens. <laughs> oh, that's silvery. <laughs> good for you, but not so good for me. <laughs> Does he? I'll look into that. Talking about my phone. Okay. Uh, well, chances are they're going to be investigating in the middle of Africa. They're going to so, a pilot, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll write up a, 
a classified ad to put into the paper tomorrow. Uh, wanted mm -hmm. pilot for African expedition. Uh, would would your character actually be qualified for a transatlantic flight? Do you think? I think so. Okay. I mean, my skill is pretty high, so I should be able to handle it. <laughs> okay. Hey, do I have your phone? Like I'm sorry. What was your what was your question, Brandon? Oh, uh, historically, how long does Jackson take to research these books he writes? It's, it's not more than like six months or so, right? Well, his books came out, you know, every couple of years. So, well, this is just for one expedition. So I'm thinking like a couple of months. So, in the ad, I'll say wanted pilot uh, for African expedition. Yeah. Expected duration, two months. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like, I mean, his books come out you know, every few years, so it looks like it takes him either a year or two years, depending on um, the book. Okay. So I'll post that ad. Uh, I'll, I'll type it out and carry it down to them. To, uh, go to the evening world! On my way to go look for Frederick Ritter! <laughs> and that's... Now, I think now keep in mind that um, let's see uh, travel is at, well most of the travel is actually by uh, in 1925 will be by steamship okay because tra the transatlantic flights at this point just aren't you know up to they snuff. were more yeah. like experimental flights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was one of these things where they would send, they would kind of shoot a pilot over the ocean and go, "Oh, thank God he survived." That sort of thing. So, I mean, a tra basically, getting across the Atlantic, your choice is slow boat or not so slow boat. Well, I'm not going, but whoever the pilot is, I'll trip him up. I'll pack up the plane and put it on the ship somehow. I, I assume they have people who deal with that. So, uh, travel, because travel from New York to Mombasa, which would probably be one of the, you're, you're going to either have to travel to, like, you know, Saudi Arabia or to probably uh, England and then from England go to Africa. We're talking at least 12 days mm. just in travel time, so. Okay. Expected duration. Well, three, that's three that, months. and that's that's if you if you're buying a nice fancy ocean liner thing. If you're going by a steamer, it can be slower. Expected duration six months then. <laughs> <laughs> Most okay. of it travel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lots of travel, and then. So you go for holidays for two two weeks is actually go for holidays for two months. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Sober, responsible pilot. Wanted sober, responsible. I'm, I'm editing it as I'm going down, walking down the street toward the <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Responsible. Not afraid of dark. Oh, I wouldn't want the man to be drinking, no. What's sober, responsible you pilot? Already, you already have one uh, person with a drinking problem in the group. Oh, yeah. No, we'll all have That's drinking problems that. by the end of it. <laughs> Now, um, how how do we want to work um, Tony's character into things? Because obviously you're not. You know, what sort of uh, writing does your character do, Tony? Uh, folklore and uh, history. <laughs> Sorry and about Tony, that. And Tony just killed his phone. Um, <laughs> well, what we can assume then is that you and. Um, uh, your character and Arthur know each other at some point, maybe for research purposes, since he is a professor of history. Right, and I was working in New York on a book anyway, so I, I may have stopped in to, to, to check on the history uh, teams at the library, at the uh, universities. Well, I, I would suggest that he knows Frederick. Okay. That, that, that way everything's not hinging on me, because I don't want to be in that position. Yeah, that just means we get to kill you first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that I mean that works just as well. I mean, you know, you could have 
because Ar- Arthur, or Arthur, um, Frederick writes. Um, what sort of stories does does Frederick write, Paul? Um, I, I see him. I see him at this at this point, sort of getting like. Um, Kind of what what we would call today uh, human interest things, cats they, stuck they, in trees, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that or like you know, um, he goes and, he goes and reports on the parades and stuff in all the little neighborhoods. But he wants to be a big time journalist by writing the like about the um, like Zulu death cults and. Uh... Oh yeah, you know if they show up in New York. <laughs> which which happens often, but anyway, that's so that's that's I mean that's how you would have on your sideline stories trying to get you know something like front page and exploitative. That's how you had encountered probably both of these two guys. You had um, you've done that sort of that sort of work. So yeah, how does that sound, Tony? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, any cultural events or anything like that he would have worked on, I would have tried to. I've uh, been at the same area, so that would have worked. Yeah, yeah. You could have you could have given uh, his character, you know, booze in order for uh, getting access to like museum events or something. Right. Okay. I never turned down free booze because <laughs> usually I can't afford much more than the crap stuff. <laughs> um. All right, so we'll say like it's it is now the next day. It's the fourteenth, um, and uh, you so uh, Arthur has contacted uh, Frederick. I'm assuming about this. Yeah. And uh, Frederick has dragged uh, Samuel along, thinking that this might be a uh, opportunity for for free booze. And well, I'm hoping there will be drinks. <laughs> um. So do we want to say you know it's like in the in the um, in the late afternoon and your your ad was in the morning paper so maybe there's all or in the evening paper back in the day when there were multiple editions of a newspaper in one day um, and uh, uh, Gordon has at least you know given you an initial call about uh, the advertisement looking for a a pilot, even though now you're going to be going on a boat. <laughs> so, um, all of you have sort of gathered around in um, in Arthur's office, and uh, let's see, you try to explain to everyone the Carlisle expedition. Oh, gentlemen, so glad you could come. <coughs> uh, has everyone been introduced? Uh, Frederick Richer, Samuel Cotter... Uh, Mr. Ravenshire, you're the pilot. Excellent. Um, Martha Pym. Um, I've been asked to uh, collect reliable individuals for an expedition to Africa to investigate the... I'm, I'm actually holding up papers. Uh, to investigate the... <laughs> I thought you were pointing at a globe. <laughs> <laughs> Africa, spin. <laughs> Here we go, right here. Uh, to investigate the the true um, um, what's the word for it? The thing that happened to somebody. I don't want to say demise. You know. Disposition. <laughs> disposition. The actual disposition of the Carlisle expedition, which, as you know, was uh, gruesomely killed roughly five years ago. So. Um, Mr. Ravenshire, I, do, can you drive? Oh yes, I'm a very good driver. Uh, and are you experienced with rifles and pistols? Uh, I was in the war, machine guns, submachine guns. Excellent. Guns. All right, I'm well, also I was also trained in martial arts and close hand combat. Oh, well, I, I assume that will have to do. Although preferably they're dead by the time they get to you. Um, because there will be dangerous native tribes in this area. They've already killed one set of investigators, so uh, you know, best to be prepared and all that. All right, wonderful. Um, I have no idea what the position will pay, 
But uh, Mr. Elias, who's actually managing the expedition, he'll be arriving tomorrow. And uh, he just asked me to to uh, assemble the staff, and I'm I'm sure that you know whatever arrangement you come to with him is on matters of uh, renum renumerary compensation will be will be will be added. All right, so let's see, Mr. Cotter, a writer. Um, yes. Do any of you speak African by any chance? <laughs> Uh, I, I know German. Probably Why doesn't have know German. Why would anyone know German? Never mind. <laughs> because it's the only thing my grandmother would shout at me in. Oh. Oh, well, one never knows. There may be Germans in Africa. Um, they seem to have an affection for the continent for some reason. <laughs> right then. Any questions? I suppose you, you've given us as much information as you have. Yes. But that was it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask who's funding this expedition? Uh, uh, Jackson Elias and uh, probably his employer, Prospero Pre or publisher, Prospero Press. Hmm. Um, all of his books, he's, he's a, a noted, respectable author. He's funded and equipped several expeditions into far-off, misty places populated by savages. And... Uh, and this he, he also those. he also sent uh, the the original one that got uh, horribly. No. Oh, good lord, no! Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that, was, that was funded by some some rich white boy and and so forth. Yeah. Uh, J uh, Jackson Carlyle was it? Not no, no, Jackson Robert. Robert. Like this, Robert Carlyle. Hmm. No, yeah. well. No relation to the actor of the same name because this adventure was written like twenty years before he he became an actor. What, really? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh! Robert Carlyle! Yes. Rubble Stilskin! Among, yes, among other things. That's what I'm doing <laughs> for Halloween. But yes, there, it, it is unrelated because this was actually written in like the 1982. So. Well, that's pretty wacky. Right yeah. Then. So, uh, yeah, um, Prosper Press would probably be giving an advance to Jackson or Mr. Elias. We'll then be paying you. And it'll all come out of the back end after his book is published. It, he's, I, I, he's, I'm not really he's, involved in that. You have to discuss that with him. He's likely a man of independent means. Well, by this point, he's published several books. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've, I've actually heard of several, uh, a few of his books. I he seems to be doing pretty well for himself. They all have really tawdry names, like Skulls of the Blood of the Death of the Brothers of the Something of Something. something. <laughs> Kind of, kind of titles that, that jump out at you from a bookshop window. Yep. Killed by Death. Murder Row. Stuff like that. Okay. So after after your your wowing um um <laughs> something like that. Yeah. <laughs> that tune they play. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, after you, your your rousing presentation, um, the 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 other investigators decide uh, against their better judgment to go ahead and join you. Oh, I won't be going. <laughs> oh heavens no! <laughs> well, I mean, you had to go with them at least to meet Jackson. Well, I'll, I'll do the introductions and all. Right. Okay. Where are we meeting him? I'm sorry? Where are we meeting Mr. Elias? Uh, you will be meeting him tomorrow at his hotel. He is at the, the Chelsea Hotel. Hmm. All right. Um, so what we will do at this point is do a, a fade to black and um, the next day. And um, he wants you to meet him at his room at 8 p.m. in room 410. You did um, get a uh, message from uh, the front, uh, someone via the front desk of the, of the Chelsea Hotel telling you that uh, Jackson had arrived and that, you know, and to go ahead with the, you know, the, with the meeting and he set the, the time of um, 8 p.m. Like I said, he is room, in room 410. So. All right, I'll show up there about a half hour early and uh, get a gin and tonic in the bar. Okay. 
to relax and put myself into that adventuring mood. And then shortly after, the rest of the 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 merry band meets you there in the lobby. Oh no, I meet him in the bar. <laughs> And I, I, or, I order I order the cheapest beer they have. Oh, Mr. Director, pleasure to see you. Arriving uh, punctual, excellent. Jackson is also uh, Mr. Elias is also extremely punctual. You will appreciate that quality, I assure you. Well, I hope so because uh, keep up a fine evening of uh, of listening to uh, listening English to folk music. At one of the museums, it wasn't top on my list of things to do. So I'm glad to have a diversion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the rest of the party shows up. You're all at the uh, hotel, and uh, shortly before eight, you decide to go up. Uh, which of you will be the one to knock at the door? Well, I think Arthur should. Oh, well, I guess I know him, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <coughs> um, everyone make a listen roll, please. Oh, hey, a skill roll. Oh, dice. Oh, wow, do I fail. Okay, so... <laughs> Your your beer or whatever it was you were drinking uh, went straight to your head and you um, you hear nothing. <laughs> did 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 anyone happen to make their listen roll? It's a it's no, a deal. Okay. It's a D one hundred, right? Yes. Uh, roll your listen skill or lower. Come on. I haven't found my real dice yet. Uh, one D one hundred. Roll the dice. No. Nope. Twenty three. And my listen is twenty five. So no. you actually rolled under. By two. By two. Uh -oh. Um, you hear some sort of slight scuffling sounds, but there is no answer at the door. Do you hear that? Mm. No, I didn't no, hear anything. No one else hears anything. Not a thing. Well, I mean, it sounds like he's not quite ready to receive us, but if so, he would have called out and said, just a moment, don't you think? Maybe he's in the shower. I don't know. I, I, quite, I, there was a sound. I heard it clearly. Yeah, you can. When you knock, you hear. You you can hear some movement inside. Is it locked? Uh, no. Maybe we should just let ourselves in. Well, I don't think that would be appropriate. Well, he hasn't responded. Well, that's just, that's not an invitation. It's most markedly a lack of an invitation, actually. We'll call through the door then. Jackson. <laughs> Hello. Um, you, you hear uh, it's, uh, it's Arthur. You, you hear a slight tinkle of, of what might be broken glass. I'm definitely sure I heard something that time. Broken glass, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe something's wrong. You know what? I'll risk being rude. Allow me. Okay. So you 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 throw the door open. No, well, I, I I open it. You know, politely, forcefully, but politely. Yes. Um. Oh, really? I must protest. <laughs> okay. There are uh there are three people who are not Jackson Elias in the room. Um. Elias is dead on his bed. Rather bloodily, um, two two of the um, two of the individuals um, appear to be of African descent, whereas the third looks a bit shifty and, and maybe one of those junkies that you heard so much about in the uh, in the newspapers. Yeah, I've interviewed a few of them. <laughs> so, 
what what are you guys going to do? Uh I I exclaim, what the devil? What the deuce? So, it, it, does it look like they killed him? It would appear, yes. Um, there, there is a lot of blood around um, Jackson, and um, it appears that there has been something carved onto him. Here now, what's the meaning of this? Probably at the same time you're saying, what, what the devil? Yeah. I, uh, I I turn to uh, to Samuel and, and and Guff and I say we should we should restrain them. I'll I'll rush in. I'll I'll push past. What 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 are you doing here? Okay. This is not the appointed time. How many how many uh, people were in the room? There were uh, three individuals and a dead body. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rush in and, and... We'll, we'll explain that later, Brandon. Try and, uh, try and restrain one of the guys. Okay. Okay. So... I have a feeling I'm about to get stabbed. <laughs> okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we are uh, what is um, what is each of your dexterity? Okay. I have a 10. I have a 12. I have a 14. Okay. Large engine. Uh, no, I have a 9. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to attack in order of dexterity. Um, I shall go last. Luckily, you get to go after the um, the cultist. So um, that doesn't sound lucky. But okay. <laughs> um, they're each wearing. I'm trying to think of how to describe this. Um, each of them are wearing a hat made out of a bloody tongue. What? A hat. That's <laughs> a hat, meaning the thing you put on your head, made out of a bloody tongue. Like... Like a cow's tongue? Like a giant tongue, or no, no, no. There's a, a no, no. Tongue. It's a normal sized tongue. It's kind of flapping on the front. It, it actually, yeah. It, it, it looks much more disturbing than it sounds. <laughs> no, it sounds pretty disturbing. <laughs> can I, can I make an occult check to see if I can figure out what's going on with the hat? Yeah, uh, sure. We, we can work that out last, but um, okay. So we'll, we'll worry about the fight. Um, so, um. Gordon rushed into the room. Sure. Okay. What was your, uh, what was your dexterity? Four, uh, Twelve. Twelve. Okay. So uh, hold on to me. Um, I'll actually, put it up in the I'll put it up in the chat. Okay. No, actually, the um, the cultists get to, to get to act first. Um, two of them. Oh, let me double check this. I'm sorry, two of the cultists get to go first. So, um, they have kind of um, um, really kind of scary looking um, um, curved knives with a lot of weird in I it. <laughs> ceremonial engravings on them. and um, Big hunking knives. Big hunking wow. knives and tongue hats. <laughs> Wow. It's not a Shriners convention. No, it is not. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Um, Band of the tongue. <laughs> on my percentile. And... Ooh, uh, one, of the, one of the cultists, as you rush into the room, uh, one of the cultists um, 
leaps uh, to his feet and grapples you. If um, do you have um, any sort of wrestle or what's your who? grapple? Okay, give me a skill roll at that. Roll very low. Steven. Did we lose Steven? Oh, is it for me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were the one that ran into the room, so... I thought, they, I thought everybody went in the room. Well, you rushed in first because you were the, you know... Okay. I didn't... That was not what I said. I I, well, you were the first... Well, actually, I'm pretty sure... I heard everybody you, else say they I'm were going pretty sure. Forward, I'm pretty sure Brandon said he wasn't going into the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, think, I think Tony said he was rushing in first. Yeah, yeah. yeah I th oh, oh it, was, it was Tony that rushed in first? Yeah. Yeah, I rushed oh, okay, in. Okay, I misheard. Okay. And then I was going to um, speak as I was rushing in. Um, do you have a grab? Do you have any grapple skill? No, I'm actually going to try to persuade them. I'm, I'm talking as I'm moving into the room. Do you speak Kenyan? Uh, no, but I'm speaking in English and hoping that they understand. You're going to talk very loudly. Is that what the plan is? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to talk very loudly <laughs> and enunciate. <laughs> okay. Do you understand me? <laughs> All right. You can go. Uh, uh, what are you going to attempt to say to these? Uh, this this was not the time. This was not the plan. I found these stragglers in the hall. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> now remember, I am black. Yes. That's yeah. I'm now rolling my persuade skill to try to through through my enunciation and my swinging of my hands to to intimidate them into. You're okay. going to be making one of those skill rolls against us in a second, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, go ahead and try to make your persuade roll. Let's see what happens. Okay. I, I'm assuming that Oops. you have... Uh, 60. Which I'm guessing is uh, higher than you? Yeah. Uh, no, it's lower. I've got oh. a 90 in Persuade. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> well, they, they pause for a moment, um, look at each other, kind of shrug because they have absolutely no clue what the hell you just said to them and jump you anyway. So, um, All right. you've, uh, do, you, do you have any, do you have any skill in grapple? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, what is the default? There 20, is a def uh, 25. 25, yeah, 25. Okay, so go ahead and try to roll, see if you can roll under 25. Okay. Uh, yes, I did. I rolled a five. Okay. You managed... Very good. So you managed to... Um, you guys kind of grappled a little bit. You broke his hold. Um, you did get a bloody, flappy tongue smacking in the face. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't It wasn't pleasant. It's not something that you've probably had to deal with as a author. Uh, Since I'm, I'm standing in a door, I'll try to slam him against the wall. Okay. Uh, well, then go ahead and make another grapple check. Okay. Let's see. Uh. Hang on one second. Oh, my dice up here. It's, uh, yeah, an eight. I made it again. Okay. Um, and you did better than he did. So, yeah, you slam the guy up against the wall. His... His tongue hat kind of slides down a little bit, leaving a trail of blood and spittle on his face. It's apparently a fresh tongue. Okay. I've seen stranger <laughs> things in my investigation, so I hold him against the wall. Okay. So, um, those else who are sort of combat-minded, uh, what, what are the two of you going to do? I'm going to slug one of them. Okay, go ahead. Fifty and I have a sixty in fists and martial arts. So okay, I think I connected. Yes, you connected. So I do quite a bit of damage actually. I do okay, plus four. So oh, shall I roll it out? Yes, please. Okay, so I do double because I've got martial arts. Right, so and don't forget to add your damage bonus. Yeah, I roll two four siders, so I got three plus uh oh one die four for 
my bonus too. So it's actually three four siders. Okay. Oh no, three siders actually. Sorry, punches one die three. So. Okay, so three three six ten I damage. Have, I have a three sided die if you want to. No, it's okay. I just use six sider and I divide. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's old school. <laughs> so I got ten. You got that? Yes. I heard okay. that. Did he go down? <laughs> um, that's a pretty damn good hit. <laughs> let me see. That's a pretty solid smack in the head. <laughs> like a pugilist. Um, actually, <laughs> um, almost. You are. I mean, the guy. The guy is kind of you know reeling on his feet. You. You gave him a big smack. I mean, that's. I think I have a chance to stun him, you know. How does it work? I can't remember. A certain amount of damage, isn't there a stun blow? Hold on a second. Let's see. This won't. Uh, clubs never impale. Hand to hand fighting. Yeah. Um. I'm sorry. What did you What did you roll? I I did. Uh, I did fist. Yeah. What was? Do you the want me to make a martial arts? Actually, do you want me to make a martial arts roll for this too? Yeah. Why don't you do that? Okay. Because I got high martial arts, so I probably shouldn't be a problem. But I okay. should actually roll it. Yeah. Just in case I screw it up. <laughs> Kung Fu Pilot. Oh, man, I'm having trouble finding dice here. Okay, there they are. Is that the right one? Yes. Okay. You can use uh, forty-eight. I made my martial arts roll. So. Okay. Uh, what? Well, I mean, what did you make it? But what was your final roll? Uh, forty-eight, and I have a uh, seventy-one in martial arts. <laughs> okay. Um. And I'm figuring I'm like a pugilist, uh, maybe. Yeah. A bit of the um, roll, roll your damage twice. For that. Well, I did. I it, that's what martial arts does. No, no. It, it, I mean, roll your no, roll your damage twice. You get to because of. Okay. You, you have the percentile that actually counts as an impale. Oh. Oh. Okay. Is his fist? Yes, he impaled. <laughs> he impaled him with his fist. And I put uh, I put a uh, a link in the chat to the weapon they're using. Basically, so that's looks... seven. That, do I do I only add my bonus once though, right? Yes. Okay. So okay. So that would be four more points of damage. So that's fourteen total. Okay. So you actually do knock him cold. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> it's it's basically the the weapons that they have are basically a, it looks like a machete but with like ceremonial weird engravings. Yeah. And I'll scoop up his blade if I get a chance. Okay. Um, Paul, what are you going to have um, Frederick do? Um, are you going to? You you have seen um, you've seen one of your party members sell you out, and the other uh, deck a guy and knock him out with a single punch. Uh, I am uh, I'm somewhat nervous about the company that I'm in, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there are guys with tongues on their heads, so I think they're the uh, more pressing concern. Is there a lamp in the room that I could grab? Sure. I want to grab a lamp and clock a dude with it. Okay. okay. All right. Um. Go ahead and just make a regular, like, you know, your fist punch. You want me to that. use fist, or do you want me to use the, uh, the base chance for a club? Use a base chance for a club. Yeah. Oh, I succeeded by two points. Okay. Which means I do um, D6 oh, plus we my just lost Tony. Oh, Chris, I was just wondering, do we check off things that we're successful in, or, you, or yes. only when you tell us to? No, anytime you're successful at a roll, make a check okay. on your character sheet. Eight damage. Okay. Um, the, guy, the guy is kind of you know wobbly, but he's not down. Um, <coughs> what are you going to have uh, Arthur do, Brandon? See you here now. That's, that's basically it. He's gonna just—he's going to be outraged from the hallway, is what's uh, going to I'll happen. Be the outraged from the hallway. Okay. Um, so there's one guy down. 
um, um, Paul Paul's character is engaged with the other guy. Um, let's see, hey, the, I've got a yes, question. Yes. Uh, are you guys going to make fun of me later for playing him like this so far? No. No. Or, or bitch about it? No. Did it's we not... lose Tony? Yes, we lost Tony. Ah. Uh, finders keepers. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure right. he gives a message, but um, it's not my goal to disrupt the game. So if if it no, gets to, no, you're it gets playing to a point where my my foot dragging is actually diminishing your fun. Let me know when I'll adjust. Um. So the third guy um, tries to make an attack on uh, Gordon. Um, you want to try to roll a dodge? He's Can swinging. I... Yes. Uh. Yeah, okay, I think I'll go with dodge. I was going to say parry, but maybe not a good idea. If, I don't know if I have the blade in my hand or not. Well, you have the blade. Um, is, is he swinging his blade at me? Yes, he is. Okay, well, what is the base? Because I have no skill with a... With a um, hold so on. What is the base chance for using a blade? The base chance for using a blade would be... Must be, like, pretty decent, I would expect. Um, 25? That would make sense. Yeah, it's I'm actually gonna... one. It's actually one percent better than my dodge. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. I think, and since it's in my hand, I think it would be the obvious thing for me to do would be to right. try and put it up. Right. So, so go ahead. Yeah. Uh, never been in a knife fight. Okay. So here we go. There's always a first. Uh, yeah. Uh, trouble with dice today. And that is a 13, so I parried. Okay, yes. If, well, um, unless he got terrific. No, no, actually, uh, you rolled considerably lower. Um, go ahead and, and mark, don't forget to mark that skill. Yeah. So, um, um, that's, that's weird. It went away. And but, does that if you if you click something. It... Is, is parrying a separate skill to, to fighting with a blade? No. 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 I'm. I got Stormbringer. Stormbringer head. Yeah. It's, it's well, in in theory, in theory, you're not really supposed to be in that many fights in Call of Cthulhu. Right. So. No, a parry is. Um, okay. Yeah. So, and remember, bullets cannot be parried. Darn. No! Bullets, yeah. You can't, no, you yeah. can you can dodge you can you can parry them, but they'll still go into you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so um if you want to do you want to attack back? Um Yeah, uh, sure. Um I'm not gonna uh try I'm just gonna be like stopping his blade and then I'm gonna try and you know, punch him again. Punch, punch the new guy. Punch okay. Him. Yeah. All right. Because it worked so well the first time. Yes, it I did. I think that's pretty much my mode of operation here. Twenty-three. So that's another hit. Oh, I'll do a martial arts roll too. Yeah. Uh, what was your? Eighty-nine. Okay, I fluked my martial arts roll, but I did connect with my punch. Okay. What? Which? What's your base percentage of your punch? Uh, my base uh, is sixty. Oh no. So I mean, yeah, sixty You're, is my. Uh, and my you rolled. Skill. And you rolled a twenty-five. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't low enough to like get any sort of special benefit or. Well, no, actually, that should. Um... Wait. I think you have to be a lot lower than that, isn't no. it? No. No, no. It, it's based on. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. You said your. What was your base percentage? Sixty. Sixty. Is it an? No, impale? that that is not an impale. Yeah. yeah. It's one fifth the skill. Yes. Right? Yeah, I was yeah, just yeah, doing the math. Very yeah. low. But... Yeah. No, I mean the last time you rolled low enough that you. Okay. So this is just a normal, your normal damage. Okay. So okay. So. And uh, on a one die three. Okay. Is three and. Okay, I did seven. That's because I'm strong, so I, I actually get bonus damage for strength. Okay, so you did seven points? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Half of last time. Yeah. So. All right, so you've got two of your opponents um, on the ropes. Um, uh, Paul, you're going to have um, 
Frederick uh, attempt to clock his guy with the with the the uh, lamp again? Yeah. yeah. It sounds good. Oh, um, I failed by one point. Okay. So you 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 miss uh, you miss horribly. Um, and actually, uh, you kind of lose your grip on the lamp, so... Yeah, I figured it was going to shatter eventually, anyway. Yeah. Um, so, Brandon, at this point, do you think, uh, you, Arthur is probably trying to get authorities, or... <coughs> well, actually, I was going to say, no, see here! Unless I've already... S I haven't said that one yet, have I? No, I don't believe you have, no. There you go. <laughs> no, see here! Okay, he's... One guy's down... He just dropped his lamp. There's two guys still up. Who looks one guy who looks like a morphine addict, and the other one yes, is some kind of black guy. Yeah, tribesman, uh, Kenyan. Yes, okay. they're all still up. They're all in very guy cheap guy. suits. No, no one in, on your side has has taken any damage. All right, I'm gonna go out into the hallway and get a uh, one of those big red fire extinguishers off the wall, <laughs> and come back. Um, did they have big red fire extinguishers in 1925? They probably had silver ones. Okay. They probably had the oh, kind pressure, that you had to pressured pump. water. Probably. Yeah, you had to. Yeah, you probably had to pump it up. So, as long as it's about two, two or three. Oh yeah, they'd be heavy. Metal, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's see. Each of your. Ooh. Um. I I am so sorry, Paul. One of the uh, your cultist. Uh, hit you with his. Um, why don't you make a dodge roll? I would love to make a dodge roll. <laughs> <laughs> My dice would not, however. Okay. He. he ooh. I'm so sorry. Is it um, nail? <laughs> no. No. Um, but you take eight points of damage from his. Uh, from his blade. Ow. Is is that a lot? Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. Let me put it this way: I I had fourteen. Yeah. Now I have six. I mean, what is that being subtracted from? His hit, hit points. points. Okay. How would you know what that is? Uh, um, it's it's the uh, average of your con and size, I believe, rounded up. And you're not yeah. using hit locations this time. No. Okay. No. Good to know. Yeah, just more work. Yep. <coughs> and um. Oh wow, eight is a lot. Wow, <laughs> I I am I am yes, I, eight is a lot. I I am sorry. I, I'm on a rolling spree. Um, um, Stephen, your your guy also took a hit from from your cultist. You want to try to make a dodge roll? Um, is this with the blade again? Yes, dodge or parry, whichever yeah, you prefer. Yeah, I'm gonna do the parry again. I doubt I'll okay. get it a second time. Oh, what did I get? No, I thought it was a ten. It's not. It's a seven. No. Oh. So I, uh, yeah, I took a blade. Uh, you take four points of damage. Okay. So I'm at ten because I also the, have fourteen. The dice hate Paul. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I didn't expect to come out unscathed in this fight. I wasn't expecting to lose more than half my hit points in one go, though. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now that you're fueled by desperation and blood. It's your guys' turn. What's going to happen? Uh, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna punch the guy. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a ninety-nine. <laughs> I am so sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> you're you're lucky you didn't punch yourself with that roll. <laughs> I think I punched the wall. Yeah. I'm going to okay. try and kick my guy in the groin. Okay. I, I'm in dirty fighting mode now that the guy has hit me with his blade. And I just... No, I missed. Okay. That's what I'm looking okay. for. Okay, so now that... Uh, um, are you rushing back into the room with a uh, brandishing a fire extinguisher? With one of those. A period fire extinguisher. <laughs> Holding it by the ring at the top. Okay. I come back in and I swing it at the closest bad guy. That Just would um, that would probably be the one that's on uh, Paul. 
false character, I should say. There you go. So, um, make a... Get off of him, you heathen! Um, hmm. What would you roll for that? Um, Desperately. <laughs> club, probably. Club, yeah. Yeah, club is about yeah roll off club, which is... This is all brute uh, force and no skin yep, whatsoever. Yep, tw- so uh, your default is 25%. Alrighty, let's see what I've got. 1d100. Roll the dice! 64! That's not very good. No. <laughs> So you come in, you yeah, you come in screaming, and you drop it on on in between the two of you. So, bugger, that's not the way that meant to go. What I drop it? No, no, oh. you didn't roll that badly. If you if you, you rolled like, it and, yeah, I mean, it it does have a very convenient handle. Yeah. Ah, you yeah. hit the floor, is what he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Or Get back, maybe. you. <laughs> okay. So it is. Um, go away, or I shall taunt you some more. Oh. And this round, uh, the cultists actually can't roll their dice. So you guys got lucky this time around. Um. Uh, Paul, what are you gonna uh, have, um, Frederick do? You gonna go for another? Oh uh, no! There's somebody between me and the in the oh that's the, true the Negro with the knife. So I'm gonna I'm gonna back away, clutching my wound. <laughs> okay, that might be the that might be the best plan. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to apply pressure. You know. <laughs> okay. Um, and I hit this time with my kick, and I'm going okay. for martial arts. Oh, zero two. That Ooh. is a critical with martial arts. Yes, that is. So, but I got a. So you get to roll a big bunch of dice. I got a twenty-eight with the kick, so that's not okay. any. No. Kick his head off. So, of his what body. do you want me to to do with? Just uh, should I do four again, uh, twice double it or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Impale. Yeah, we'll do, because you got the crit. We'll go ahead and we'll consider that to be an impale. Okay. Anyway. He's about to punch the he- or kick the hell out of this guy. He's going to be tasting his groin, I believe. Ten, sixteen points of damage. He goes, oh. he wow, right in the groin. That's yeah, gonna really I, suck. I don't he, think he's he, gonna be needing. I, I don't think he's gonna be having yeah. children. <laughs> he, he, he crumples like an old pile of laundry and just don't goes ever down. Don't ever me. <laughs> It's a good thing you've got a soldier, because he's taking care of two of these cultists, so... I figured we might need one, and I, I wanted to play the character that's probably um, most likely to uh, not go insane. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but he won't know what's going on, either. <laughs> okay, um, Brandon, so you're going to have your guy swing the... Uh... Swing the other way! <laughs> okay, roll again. Even the blind bird gets the worm sometimes. 1d100. Roll. 77. <laughs> Once again, you... <laughs> Come on. Coward, you, you, know, you almost... You actually... Menacing you, backward or something? You, you almost hit um, Frederick with that swing. <laughs> <laughs> I really haven't dr- had enough to drink to be going through all this. Um, okay, so... I really um, thought we would get to Africa before we had to fight the natives. Um, and the, the the last guy tries to fight his way out and, and really doesn't do a very good job, so... Um, is it time for the, uh, the person that can actually fight in this group to uh, take him out as well? It yeah, I will go for a karate blow then. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't do karate blows. I do. I, I'm pugilist. I'm not. I don't have like oriental martial arts skills. Okay. Um. So that's martial arts. Yes. And uh, punch. I think I. I actually missed him. Okay. I scored my martial arts, but I didn't actually connect with the actual blow. Okay. Um. It was very nicely done, but it was a complete miss. Yeah. <laughs> It looked really damn good as you missed really him. Nice if I had connected. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, you gonna go at it with the uh, fire extinguisher one more time? Absolutely. 
All right. Try, try not to hit um, <laughs> Gordon. 86. <laughs> Lailing all over the round with a huge metal fire extinguisher. <laughs> Everyone's scared. One, one more time. You know, uh, if one more of those and you're going to actually hit the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> it'll wrap around and then it'll just roll low. <laughs> Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the Bible out of the nightstand, uh huh, and chuck it at the guy. Okay. And it's a heavy one. It's one of those Gideon ones, right? <laughs> Back nope. Then. It no, goes it goes Bibles sailing too. right over the guy's head. <laughs> it it kind of grazes the tongue and it gets this like you know flat. Oh. Oh. The, the the tongue licks the Bible as it goes over <laughs> his head. Blasphemy. <laughs> You know you want to keep one of these tongue hats for yourself. It's next year's fashion. <laughs> well, as a student or as a professor of, of anthropology, you know it could be interesting as a specimen. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, I lost track of time. So I think that is there. Oh, and he rolled horribly. So, um, it is your guys' turn again. Who, who wants to try to actually take this guy out? I'm going to go for a headbutt this time, because I'm okay. not very good at it. <laughs> I got it! I don't believe it! And martial arts? Yes! So I just headbutt this guy. <laughs> and I got a 0-8 on the, on, the on the headbutt. And I only have like 20 or something. No, 15. So I got it. But I'm okay. okay. Yeah, that, that so just normal, yeah, normal, a, yeah. normal damage. So it's 1 die 4... Plus one die four, so okay, so three die three die four. Uh, that's that's a phrase you don't hear very often. Three die four for the damage. Yeah, and that is five points to him. Okay. Smack my head into his um, jaw. You you took the guy down. All right. So all three all three of the um. Hi, all three of the cultists have have been taken out. Um. I would say Bye, Gordon. about <laughs> Bye, Gordon. <laughs> I would say that probably um, three minutes and a hell of a lot of noise has occurred. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, only because you had an Englishman rushing around smashing things with a fire extinguisher. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> Professor, um, make yourself useful and call the police. Well, do you want to call the police immediately? Or do you want to, you know, maybe well, like shut? How long shut is it going to take the police to get here in 1926? It's going to take them like an hour. An hour. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the Chelsea Hotel. Um, who who's been stabbed? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so who hasn't been stabbed? Yeah. Both of you guys have been stabbed. Yeah. Um, who's stabbed worse? Hi. <laughs> He's like he's almost mortally wounded. <laughs> I think I think Gordon was just okay. sort of flashed. In well, a grin. Do, I, was I was just stabbed. made angry. <laughs> I'm gonna do first aid on on him then. Okay, do a yeah, do a first aid roll, and you can heal one d three points of damage. To to uh, Paul, so go ahead and make your skill roll. I rolled a nine. Okay, Woo. that's success. Success. Don't forget to check that off. And I have, where's my three side? There it is. I will roll. See, because I have, oh, that's a four sider. Where's my three sider? Oh, no, that's a four sider as well. Okay. I can't find my three sided die. Nope, that's a four oh. What the hell is that? That's a six sider. Is that what these little X's are on the character sheet are for? Yeah. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hang on, I'll do that then. Yeah. So a listen and a, uh, is that a first aid? First, first aid, yeah. Okay. And then at the end, those are the ones we get to roll to see if we improve. And you get, uh, you were lucky, and uh, Frederick gets three points of damage uh, healed from the bandaging up. He can, do, uh, he can attempt first aid on both of us, can he? Yeah, you can attempt first aid on both of you. Is so he gonna oh. give me a little bit of a uh, band aid there? Is is, is Frederick, on my, is Frederick on my arm. going 
to die, or is he in the clear, or what? No, no, I'm, I'm, you know, not dying. You, you bandaged me. I'm not going to bleed anymore. Put, put your hand right here. And now, uh, now keep your hand there because if you don't, parts of you are going to fall uh, out. Meanwhile, apparently look, you uh, just you just killed him. I'll go look at uh, Gordon. I don't okay. Know. okay. Like cut on my arm or something. Roll. Eighty-one. That's not good. Okay. My first aid is six. Not a botch, though. So. Oh, did we lose somebody? Uh, yeah, Paul dropped out. Right we're now. we're waiting. I don't, yeah, and I haven't heard from Tony, so I don't know what happened. Uh, if he just... Oh, wait, hold on. Game messages. boring, losing no. consciousness. Yeah, sometimes when people drop out, eh, they can't get back in unless you send them a link. Let me... Let me read. They ask if they can't get back That's in. That's what kind of... Well, because no, Tony left and came back once already, but I will... And I'll reinvite just to be on the safe side. Uh. Anyway, I did not successfully first aid uh, Guff. Okay. Where's my wedding ring? Well, that's weird. Just to be on the safe side, I reinvited them. Oh, it's on my other hand. Okay. Sorry, I, I pressed too hard on my wound and passed out for a second. Yeah, that's... Um, now, you see... Oh, thank the heavens, I thought we'd lost you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to attempt to do a quick... Drawing. Oh, there, there are plug any things for that. Huh? Apps. There are apps for that. Yeah, I'm sure there are, but um, it will actually probably be just easier for me to do a quick sketch. All right, so. <laughs> Make sure I'm holding it up. There we go. See that right there? That is what you see um, carved into Jackson's forehead. Hmm. Can I make an anthropology roll to recognize what seems to be some kind of tribal symbol? You could. I will make that attempt. Can okay. I make it a cult roll? Sure. Hail Mary. Nope. Nope. I'm going to do an astronomy roll because I think it's related to stars because I'm really smart, you know? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. That's what I was taking at Oxford, but I dropped out. I only have 11%. <laughs> Anthropology 91 or roll the 40. Hmm. Okay. Um... Putting putting um, two and two together between the the carved symbol and the tongue hat, hmm. um, you 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 remember uh, coming across a reference to a cult known as um, the cult of the bloody tongue. That would seem appropriate. Hmm, and it might be a different cult of the bloody tongue now. They are, um, um, it is a Kenyan-based cult. Which is in Africa. Yes. And uh, Nairobi Those is also in Kenya. I'm thinking that this is not a coincidence. <laughs> um, do you guys want to, like, um... Like do a search of the bodies before um, before police come, or do you want to just leave leave the guys as it is? And oh no, I'm totally going through their pockets. No. Okay. I I'm gonna go call the police. Okay. And then I'm gonna help them rifle through their pockets. I'm okay. Gonna, did we check the corpse itself? It was um, our our benefactor or whatever. Yes, the corpse has been um, eviscerated. Is, is his clothing still? I mean, has it been removed or is it like <coughs> up? Or 
Um, well, the clothing he was wearing, there, there is a jacket um, that he's got sort of uh, hanging um, over a, well, clothing hanger. Okay, I'm going to go take a look in that. Okay. And I'll also um, look in the waste paper baskets. <laughs> well, you never know where it's, you're going to find something important. Oh, um, I, actually, after I call the police, I'm not going to help him look because he can look through pockets on his own. I'm going to okay. look for Jackson's notes. Okay. After I call the police. Right. I'm not going to give them a lot of details. I'm just going to say there, there's uh, been a murder at this address. And then I'll hang up. Hold on, I'm trying to find... Don't hell. answer that. Fool questions from the constables. Time is of the essence! Stay very still, Paul. You're being stalked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm used to that. Kitty! Okay. Yeah, I know... <sighs> Hold on, I'm trying to find it again. I know I had, um, you find some, um, um, uh, Arthur finds some papers and some photos in, uh, the desk. Hmm. I think these might be related. So, you might want to, um, you know, like, shove them. Keep them, yeah. Inside your jacket. <laughs> Quick, snap photos with your smartphone. <laughs> I'm going to Twitter these photos. <laughs> Get them into the cloud. It was... Where the hell did it go? Okay. He's a professor, right? He probably has like one of those ex yeah. expandable briefcases that has endless amounts of notes and stuff filing out of it. Yeah, that he could shove the papers into and not realize that... Uh... Oh, absolutely. Okay. You also find on... Um... You find on the um, you find on the the uh, cultists you find um, some various. Uh, you I've find like, one of those. You find like a couple of business cards, some matchbooks, just weird. Hmm. You know, that sort of. It looks like um, some of the stuff was was hastily shoved into their pockets. Uh, you find. You find an invite to a um, 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 a um, a lecture on um, the cults of darkness in Polynesia and the Southwest Pacific, shoved in one of their pockets. So you're thinking that that probably didn't start from them, but yeah, you find you find a few. Um, You find a few, you know, so you, you find some some scattered papers and and things that you know we'll we will uh, probably talk about in the next session. But yes, you do find a number of things, and just as you're you're finishing your rifling and and wiping blood off of um, yourselves, a uh, police officer shows up. Oh, and awesome. glad you've arrived. Uh, it is Lieutenant Poole of uh, the Homicide Squad shows up. Uh, he has a couple of um, uniforms with him as well. I am off the pin. Took you long enough. Columbia University. I introduced the other fellows. We encountered these men attacking that man who is already dead when we arrived. We've subdued them for you, and here they are. Yes, we subdued them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually say that in a very sarcastic tone, mumbling behind his back. <laughs> yes, we, as a party, subdued them. <laughs> Those among us were involved. I certainly felt. 
<laughs> yeah, what, yeah, you're scaring the <laughs> baby. <laughs> it's an important thing. <clears throat> I don't think this is a time to quibble. <laughs> um, are you going to share any of your information with the um with the well, police? You should give him a dissertation on the history of these this tribe of the <laughs> tongue hats that have really made the police happy. <laughs> we we were we were here to to for a business meeting with Mr. Elias. Hmm. Um, what, what, what sort of business do you, did you have with the, with the deceased? He was supposed to tell us what he had hoped to hire us for when we arrived, but uh, we didn't have the chance to talk. Hmm. Mr. Uh, Pro, uh, Professor Pym here was uh, asked to. Uh, Gather some some folks for whatever Mr. Elias's business was. Hmm. So, so you had absolutely no idea why he wanted to pay well, the group of you. I know he was working on one of his books. Do you, are, are you familiar with Mr. Elias's work? Um, I don't really read books. a lot. Of, I don't really books read a lot about, of books about. He writes books about death cults. Yeah. Folks like this. So this is probably why he came to his rather gruesome end. Maybe he was writing a book about these people and they didn't like what he was putting down. <laughs> um, I don't know, you're the detective. They put him down. So there was nothing evidence-wise that you found other than these three hooligans. Well, I pointed the knives, the machetes. I believe that's called a machete. I pointed the tongues. They were wearing them like hats. <laughs> mm. Yes, yes. I can confirm everything he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I also pointed my wound. <laughs> they were definitely willing to use those... What did you call them, Doc? Machete. They were definitely willing to use their machete. So the three of you rushed in, and among the three of you, you subdued these three cultists. Well, let's give the young man credit. He did most of the heavy lifting. Um. I, 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 I got a, a, a solid hit in with the lamp. I point to the remains of the lamp. So that, so, that damage, so that damage was done, in fact, after the, the, the deceased was, was killed. Hmm. And he was dead when you arrived. As far as we know. And none of you had anything to do with killing him. Oh, good heavens, no! <laughs> Why don't you make a credit check roll to go with that? Uh, now, see, here... I'm going to make a persuade check to... Uh, yeah, because you don't want to be rolling a credit check. No, because Detective Poole is obviously barking up the wrong tree. We came in well, to find to find yeah. two darkies and a crazy guy with a tongue on his head standing over the corpse. Well, technically they all had tongues on their heads. Right, but I had to set him aside from the darkies. C credit rating 54, I rolled a 79. Okay. Yeah, he's somewhat skeptical about elements of your story. I, I got a 57 on my Persuade. And what is your skill? Uh, 66. Wow, you guys are persuasive. Well, you know, I'm a reporter who smells of booze. They may not want to talk to me unless I, you know, convince them. I thought my credit rating was... <laughs> I don't think cops trust people that don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Not in 1925, at least. Oh, well, you're white and you smell like whiskey. I'm going to let when you was, get away with it this when time. Was prohibition. Right about now. Now, yeah. So it is, but they still all drink. They were all going to speak. Oh, people. yes. There's a. They're all Irish, right? I completely forgot. Stopping at the bar and. The... 
bar. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like a glass of milk. You just, you just had, a, you just had a, a tonic and cherry syrup. <laughs> you had neg cream. Okay, so um, he he on, on he. Anyway. He collects he collects um, contact information from each of you, but he is still rather skeptical about uh, the veracity of your stories. Um, he asks if if you uh, need to be taken to uh, a hospital. No, he does. <laughs> oh, no. no time to be squeamish. Sepsis could set in. You could lose your entire midsection. <laughs> Oh no! I, I, that's the most important part. <laughs> I, uh, I I I know a couple of doctors. I'm sure I can get looked at. Okay. All right. Um, and I think at this point we should probably go ahead and call it call it a night. We will pick up um, next week with uh, going over the the information that you have. Um, that you managed to squirrel away from the um, from uh, casing the room, the the cops give you the standard you know don't leave town speech. <laughs> Why would I leave New York? So, and Maybe because you're going to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 